Welcome back. Today we're gonna to look at section 6.6, 6, begin 6.6, 6, uh, which is the area between two curves. And we're going to focus today on the x-axis and our graph. Um, up to this point, we've always seen our graph above the x-axis, and we've always found an area from an A value to a B value. So when we found that area, it was always a positive value. What we could see, though, is if it's below the x-axis, we could actually end up with a negative value. So, for example, if I give you f of x equals x squared minus 2x on the interval from 0 to 2, if I graph x squared minus 2x, we should know that it comes down through 0, 0, and comes back up through the point 2, 0. So there's 0, there's 2. So we should see that this area is all below the x-axis. Well, what happens if we were to integrate that? If I integrate that, I'd have the integration from 0 to 2 of x squared minus 2x dx. We can integrate x squared minus 2x, increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent. So we get x to the third over 3 minus x squared over 2, the 2's are going to cancel, from 0 to 2. Plugging in my 2, I end up with 8 thirds minus 4. Then minus, plugging in our zero, we get zero, so which kind of negates it. So I have eight thirds minus four, and eight thirds minus four gives us a negative four thirds. So what we are interested in though is what the area would be if it were to be a positive value. So we're gonna be interested in being able to come up with a positive area in this. In order to do that, we have to take and subtract this function from the x-axis, um, or take the x-axis minus that curve. And what I like to do is say that we integrate from a to b, those are our two boundary points, um, of the top curve minus the bottom curve, dx. And what I mean by the top curve and the bottom curve, the top curve is gonna have higher y values in that region. So if I look just from, we'll get a different marker here, maybe red here. Uh, if we look just from zero to two, because that's all our interval here is on, which one has, which function has higher y values? Well, the higher y values would be the x-axis, because they're always gonna be zero. The lower, or the bottom curve, is gonna be that f of x function, or um, x squared minus two x. So in order to get a positive area, we would integrate this from zero to two of our top curve, which is zero, minus that bottom curve, which is the x squared minus two x dx. And what that's gonna do is essentially, zero minus anything gives us that negative. So we can pull that negative out, so we have the negative integration from zero to two of x squared minus two x dx. We know the integration from 0 to 2 of x squared minus 2x, which was over here, gave us a negative 4 thirds. So I'm thinking the negative of negative 4 thirds, which would give me a positive 4 thirds area. So that's going to allow us to get us a positive value instead of that negative value. So what we're going to have to be careful with today is the location of our function with respect to that x-axis. So I have just a couple of examples. Won't be too miserable, I don't think, today. Um, to look at. You'll want your graphing calculator so you can graph them pretty easily. Um, and we'll go through that as well. So here's my graphing calculator. We're going to go and graph that g of x, that x to the third minus 6x squared. And I'm only interested on the interval from 0 to 4. So if we notice this curve is going to come up it's gonna bounce off the origin, go back down a ways, and then come back up. Four, if we count over, is gonna be about in here. We're going from zero to four, so our region that we're interested in is in here, which is all below the x-axis. So in order to get, again, that positive value, that positive area, because we're looking at an area again, we're gonna integrate from zero to four of the top curve, which in this case is the x-axis, so zero, minus the bottom curve, which is x to the third minus six x squared. 
Zero minus anything again is the negative of that. So we can take the negative out of our integration. If you want to multiply that negative in, you can do that as well. Either way is acceptable. I like to pull that negative out myself. So we're integrating from zero to four of x to the third minus six x squared dx and taking the negative of that. Integration of x to the third gives us x to the fourth over four minus six x to the third over three is two x to the third. We're going from zero to four. Again, don't forget that negative out there because we're taking the negative of that value. We can plug our four in. We have four to the fourth divided by four, which is actually four to the third. So it gives us 64, so the negative of 64 minus, we have again, four to the third, which is 64 times two, gives us a negative 128. From that, we're gonna plug in our zero. In this case, we're gonna get zero. Again, 64 minus 128 gives us a negative 64. The negative of that gives us a positive 64. So the area of this region below the x-axis is 64 square units. On to example two here. We again have the f of x is gonna be the x-axis. g of x is x to the fourth minus two x to the third. And this time we're going on the interval from one to two. Again, we can throw that into calculator. Uh, throw in our x to the fourth minus our two x to the third. Again, most of these are going to be below the x-axis for today. So don't get caught up in they're always gonna be below or always gonna be above. We'll eventually get to problems that some are below and some are above. So we'll have to split up some integrations. But for most of them today, if we graph this, we're gonna see that we're from one, which is out here to two. So again, our region is below the x-axis. So in order to get a positive area, we're gonna integrate from one to two. Our top curve, which is zero, minus the bottom curve, which is x to the fourth minus two x to the third dx. Again, we can multiply it negative through or we can pull it out, doesn't matter at this point. So we have the negative integration from one to two of x to the fourth minus two x to the third dx. We can go ahead and integrate. So we have our x to the fifth over five. Two x to the fourth over four gives us x to the fourth over two. And again, we're going from one to two. Go ahead and plug in our two. So we have the negative of, we have 32 fifths. Two to the fourth is 16 divided by two gives us a negative eight. And from that, we're gonna subtract our one. So we get a one fifth minus one half. We can go ahead and throw that in the calculator if you want. Uh, we got 32 fifths minus eight minus one fifth, and then plus a one half. That gives us a negative of a negative one and three tenths, or simply one and three tenths. Again, that's gonna be our area of that region. And I have one last example. Uh, we're gonna look at x squared from zero to three. Again, we're gonna go ahead and graph x squared. We should all know that x squared looks something like this. Nice U-shape. Um, we're on the interval from negative one to three. Here's negative one, here's three. So in this case, notice we don't have anything below the x-axis. Everything is above the x-axis here. So our top curve is gonna be x squared so from negative one to three of x squared minus the bottom curve, which is zero dx. So you gotta be careful because some of them may trick you up and we get into this complacent, always taking zero minus. Well, in this case, it's actually the function f of x minus the zero. So we can go ahead and integrate. We have x to the third over three from negative one to three. Plug in our three. We get 27 divided by three or nine. Minus, plug in your negative one, we get negative one third. So we have nine minus a negative one third, which is nine and one third. And that's gonna end our integration between two curves where we have it below the x-axis. Happy integrating.